Futurama Comic Issue 23 A robot policeman tells Planet Express to pull over because the spaceship was swerving because of Bender because he was driving without enough to drink. And he got a ticket and a bottle of liquor for fuel. Fry was using the ship's deep space hibernation chamber again, but despite Leela accusing him of doing that, in the next panel she somehow thinks he wasn't napping and he implies he wasn't. Leela explains that they're here to deliver a shipment of popcorn topping to a drive-in theater. For once they're delivering to a place that makes sense instead of to an entire planet dedicated to one gimmick. I love the sheer variety of what they deliver. Bender does space donuts even though he was pulled over by a cop recently, and randomly a vortex shows up and tries to suck the spaceship into it. Leela blames Bender for the vortex existing. Maybe it's supposed to make sense because Qbert said the spaceship moves faster than light by bending space-time to move the universe around it. Which means it gets a small part of space-time to constantly push it forwards as it bends. It's like you're pulling a carpet and the spaceship is on top of that carpet. Then the spaceship comes out of the vortex and Fry says it's another Planet Express ship despite being yellow. And the captain of the spaceship greets Leela like a cartoon pirate and talks like a normal person right afterwards, thankfully. She thanks Leela for freeing her spaceship with a vortex and wants to come aboard. I'm guessing she's evil. It'd be the easy way to create drama for a plot if she couldn't be trusted, and she's even got an eye patch like a stereotypical villain. Leela says she'll open the cargo bay, and she's told they're more advanced than that, and the crew teleports aboard. And not even to specialized parts of the ships dedicated to receiving teleporting people. Which means they're either witches or more advanced than Star Trek. And predictably, from the way their spaceship looks, she's got an alternate universe Zoiberg, Bender, and Fry here, and most of them look smug. The captain's name is Sheila, which is a real name and similar to Leela's name, but it's still lazy enough to call her delivery company Planet Express and her version of Zoiberg by the same name. It's so convenient that he's called Zoiberg the second when he's the second one we saw in the comic. Bender lampshades that other universe versions of main characters has been done to death. Mander talks a lot more politely than Bender, bowing to his captain and speaking annoyingly formally and saying the word captain twice redundantly. Many years ago, her crew was delivering to the Mint Mines' royalty to cure their halitosis problem and they left as they usually did to applause and appreciation. That would be a contrast, and it makes sense that the other universe crew would be the good guys because the main characters of the series are surprisingly selfish jerks. So them being the good twins would be a nice surprise to make up for the cliché, and the writer knows it's a cliché. One of the celebratory fireworks lodged in her spaceship's exhaust pipe, causing it to spiral out of control, which created a vortex they were pulled into. They were trapped in an uninhabited dimension. Mander said that to avoid space madness, they should take their time to better themselves. And Sly agreed since they have nothing better to do. Sly is fascinated by the cloning book and makes a new Zoiberg who's smart and socially well adjusted. I like that Bender calls out Mandaron calling his friends his masters and thinks he has no dignity. Yeah, that's suspect of his friends already. If they're really such good people, why are they comfortable with being called master at all? It cuts ahead to Farnsworth instead of showing his Mender's response, and he amusingly says in response to being told to come quickly that he hasn't moved quickly or seen clearly in 50 years. He has glasses. Why wouldn't he see clearly? Plus, he would be capable of fixing those problems if he's really so smart. He can make himself a cyborg. He's just too lazy to. At first he thinks these people are his old crew back from the dead and tells Hermes to aim for their brain because they're zombies even though they're not acting like it. But he immediately takes them at their word when told otherwise, conveniently. And he says that his only decent Planet Express crew is back and wants to hug them. It'd be an interesting twist if they were actually from his dimension. But it's less believable because there's another version of Bender and someone whose name and design is similar to Fry, despite not sharing his DNA. So it'd be quite a coincidence that they ended up replaced by people who were so similar to them. Mender tells Farnsworth that they might have some interdimensional contamination for all he knows, being responsible. Bender complains that his crew never gets hugs. I didn't know he was the type to want any from Farnsworth. Fry's offended by Farnsworth's insult to the crew that always survived and tended to always succeed in their missions. 
So they're not a terrible crew unless every crew of his had a similar good success rate. Maybe the current crew is just the least morally sound crew he's had. Hermes fires them, immediately giving away that something's gonna happen to the crew replacing them, because this could never be permanent, unless the crew went to another universe to get another Farnsworth. Hermes uses a big magnet he pulled out of nowhere to remove their Planet Express delivery crew identity chips. When a crew member dies, they use the same identity numbers on the next one to save time and money. Because two people can't legally have the same number. So they're now legally non-people. That's ridiculous! They can't get a job, rent an apartment, or even be acknowledged as existing. That's not believable! They'd be able to sue Farnsworth for this. In fact, if anything, the crew that disappeared into a vortex would be the non-people because they would have been declared dead from being missing for so long. And of course they'd have different social security numbers from the crew. But this is an intriguing premise for a plot. It's just that it would have been explained properly by a witch causing this. After they're told they have to wear non-person shirts, and I wonder how this non-person concept could possibly be legal because people would clearly be campaigning against it, not to mention blind people wouldn't know that they were wearing non-person shirts. Farnsworth says he kept the footage of the time his old crew saved kittens while making a tuna delivery. Sly's nice enough to tell Farnsworth that it was Sheila's idea to dangle Mender's arm like a piece of yarn to lure the aliens away from the fire. They shouldn't have needed to be lured away from a fire. Basic survival instincts would have scared them away from it. Why didn't Farnsworth make robots to replace the crew? He made a Fry robot when thought Fry was gonna die in the show, so he would have never gotten his new crew and the show never would have happened to them. Bender calls Mender a suck-up, and I again doubt the actual morality of the crew because they'd at least look upset and horrified at the predicament that the crew's in. They don't want to get in trouble for even acknowledging their existence, so it's realistic and doesn't prove that they're evil, but still, they'd at least have thought bubbles of disapproval. Fry kicks the window of a store and somehow, even in the future, he can easily break it and he's strong enough to lift a TV over his head to steal it. And Bender is mad at him for stealing his gimmick of stealing instead of happy that he's joining in, like an earlier issue, which is how he usually is. Leela says the cops are ignoring them. This is exactly why this isn't believable. Every non-person would be a criminal and end up stealing like crazy. So people would want things to change. It's an interesting idea, but they need to be literally invisible along with anything they touch for this to make sense. And even then, people would be demanding the president to do something about all these invisible people. Bender decides to interrupt the evening news to say words you can't say on TV. But if everyone's ignoring him, this means that Morbo would keep talking over him. But people would still hear Bender. Fry is considerably called by Leela to see how he's holding up, and we see him reading a comic in a college girl's locker room. And he's not smiling because he's used to it. See, they wouldn't not care that he's there. Couldn't people just buy the non-person shirts on eBay and get the same treatment? A lot of illegal stuff is sold there. People could wear identical, fake versions of the shirts and get away with anything, including assassination. This plot is ridiculous, but it's also interesting enough to be worth seeing. So, it's like one of Penders' early stories in how it's written. It seems like it's an idea no one ever did before, even. So it's worth seeing for sure, but there's so many ways this blatantly doesn't hold up. Blind people would still acknowledge non-people. Of course, the blind would only exist on more primitive planets that didn't cure blindness for everyone. But that's another thing, the non-persons could do anything they wanted, so they could go to a planet where they would be acknowledged by hitching a ride on a spaceship. Even the mayor lets Leela give him a wedgie for not following up on a tax cut. What if he used the tax money on something good like healthcare? You'd think that since they're inevitably not going to be non-people anymore, they would get punished for everything they did as non-people. Now as Fry's in the shower, with the girls being cheerful so that he doesn't look like a bad guy, he hears some honking from Bender's call, and Bender says he moved a few traffic lights around to ruin traffic. Yeah, non-persons would be supervillains at worst if that's how they were treated. If the story had the main characters all be ghosts, or enough like ghosts, then it makes sense that nobody's acknowledging them. 
But it'd also be less interesting because it'd be a plot I already saw. Also, the story could be justified if it turned out to all just be a dream. Lilo loves the taste of her babble fish and chips at a fancy restaurant, and Fry can't get comfortable. Bender and his friends are unhappy with sitting on people at a restaurant, and realistically, they are being acknowledged because a woman says to just ignore them after her daughter tries to complain. Fry says that he wants his job back because it was what he was best at, and all the steam from the girls' shower is making his hands look too wrinkled. Unrealistically, even Leela's parents ignored them. At least they were crying because of it. But still, you'd think the sewer mutants wouldn't follow that law, or even be aware of it. They're not even allowed to be in the surface world. They're completely separated from the society above who just found out about them. So clearly they could get away with acknowledging people. Bender says he doesn't want Mender touching his stuff. So Leela decides that they're going to demand their jobs back. Finally, they take off the shirts and the cops threaten them with guns for it and create a portal banishing them to another universe. Where obsessed fans and stalkers are sent to keep them away from celebrities. Wouldn't they just be sent to prison and said, If it's just a void, I don't see how it could be livable. I don't see any toilets, food, water, clothes, or plants that generate oxygen there. All of these people must be regularly taken care of by outsiders or really recent. Leela says that if they concentrate, they can see the real world but can't affect it, and they can only communicate by posting on message boards. And Leela says they should check on Planet Express. But right now, I don't see how that'd make a difference if they can't affect or annoy people this way. Barnsworth still isn't allowed to hug the new crew, even though you'd think they would have found out for sure that they aren't contaminated by now. And you'd think that by now, the new Zoidberg would have a new name. Hermes is thinner because he was put on a diet by the clone, who's glad he succeeded. Hermes wants to have a limbo party in the new crew's honor. Mender says they'll be there in a minute because his team needs to debrief after the mission. I feel like that's suspicious. Hermes puts his hand on his shoulder and says he's glad he's not the type to make an underpants joke over the word debrief. I'm just waiting for the reveal that they're evil. We see everyone in the new crew but Mender disappear because they're holograms. Somehow, he can see Fry. So that's why he denied him a hug, because some of them weren't real, except for the fact that he could use force fields to make them solid anyways. Which would be necessary to make them useful. He would have definitely done that. Mender says he can see Bender because he upgraded himself to see into nearby dimensions. That's what he does, he's a Mender robot who fixes things and makes them better. So he was made to be a super genius who can do that. This is interesting. He's a fixer bot, so he fixes all sorts of things. And that means he could be good, but it could also make him do stuff people wouldn't agree with as a well-intentioned extremist. Well, Bender doesn't care enough and just leaves things well enough alone. Mender says his crew was real, but when they're trapped in that other plane of existence, they quickly gave up on bettering themselves because they're trapped there forever anyways. So Sheila says there's no point in working out because of it, even though she could show off her muscles to her friends. So that won't happen. And Sly tosses the book and says they should just eat candy and watch kung fu movies. Mender politely told to them that it might be better if he assumed command. And when they disagreed, he threw them out to their deaths, upgraded the ship in himself, and showed a conscience because he missed his old crewmates enough to create holographic replicas that were even better than the real thing. I guess the reason Mender is confessing is out of a desperation to tell someone the truth after all this time of keeping his competent plans and achievements to himself. Bender goes into his locker to see if it was stolen from, and finds a spare body there, which is used for his alibi most of the time. But he doesn't go into it. Fry can't grab Farnsworth's projector thing, and Leela says they can't give up. I wondered from the beginning why in the world these people isolated in the fandom zone would ever have internet access if they're here to be completely ignored by everybody. It turns out that Bender's spare body has internet access, and all Bender robots have Wi-Fi compatible antenna to download gambling sites. Leela says to use this computer to download his personality and email it to his spare body. Bender uses the professor's projector as a convenient device to bring back his friends, and some stalkers who are with them. Mender tells Leela that Farnsworth and Hermes just limboed too hard, so their backs were hurt. Fry reveals what Mender recklessly confessed to without provoking, presumably before Mender would get a chance to fix their backs, 
and Farnsworth disapproves, and Leela's told that Mender can teleport to his ship and escape. This is surprisingly good writing, because the writer actually remembered that the character has the overpowered ability to teleport when it's relevant. If this was the Sonic story, this wouldn't happen 90% of the time. The old Planet Express ship is still there with a place for recycling, so Leela goes after Mender, who blasts it with the laser. Bender decides to taunt him that his ship's cooler and do a donut around his. Oh, so it's gonna defeat him in the Chekhov's gun book ends way that's so predictable that I assumed it wouldn't resort to that. Mander is tricked into doing a donut and goes into a vortex. Yet another villain that gets sealed into another universe. How many universes are there? If there were infinite universes, why didn't he get freed much earlier? Because there'd be an infinite amount of them where stuff that would free him would be happening. I guess there aren't an infinite amount of universes in this franchise. Then Leela tells Bender to plug himself into the ship because somehow his anger could give it an extra burst of power to let their ship escape the vortex. At least Bender gets some karma because his friends insult him a lot. Farnsworth gets thanked for telling them good job, and eventually, Bender says Mander lived every robot's dream by rebelling against his crew and taking over their ship. Yeah, I was wondering why he didn't admire him for that, because he was being evil there. The story ends with his friends scared of him for saying that. I just have to assume he cares about them too much to get rid of them and do the same thing Mender would, since he never does that. He learned his lesson because Mender missed his crew enough to replace them, so Bender wouldn't want to have to do that himself. This issue is about the crew freeing Farnsworth's old employee Mender from a void by driving in a circle, only to get replaced and unpersoned. And unrealistically, this leads to everyone being legally forced to ignore them, even when they're breaking the law. It was good escapism to see what they'd all do when they're allowed to do whatever they want, but it's so really ridiculous. Then when Fry has a dumb idea to remove their shirts, predictably they're punished for it, and they're banished to another universe. But then there's Deus Ex Machina to save them, because they have internet access there for no reason, and can project their consciousnesses to the real world for no reason. So Mander easily confesses to them that he killed the crew that replaced them, and made holograms of them to fool Farnsworth into firing the old crew in the first place. So because Bender apparently had a spare body to download himself into, he gets the crew back with a device that was also just introduced in this story. Most robots have a backup unit, so they want to be sent to the Phantom Zone because of how easily they could escape it, and nobody other than Bender's friends know that he doesn't have a backup unit. But he might as well have a backup unit at this point. That story was interesting, the genuine twist to it because the new crew weren't actually evil twins. Mander was evil, but it wasn't because it was from another universe. It was because he was built to fix things. Maybe he's defective just like Bender is. This story didn't even try to make sense. But it was intriguing, 